Hello! In this video, I'm going to review this brand new Zengo Synergy Core audio interface from Antelope Audio. A quick disclaimer, Antelope Audio sent me this item for free to make this review, but I'm here to give you my genuine thoughts on this interface, good and maybe not so good. Now, you may or may not know Antelope Audio produce high-end digital audio equipment, so this is a brand you will see in large commercial recording studios, plus they also make high-end audio interfaces for use in home studios, but these don't come at an entry level price. We're generally talking four figures. So what's in it for people on a tighter budget? Well, the idea of the Zengo is to bring the world of Antelope Audio to users at an early stage in their recording journeys. And this interface retails at less than $500, pounds or euros, depending where you are. It incorporates Antelope's signature clocking technology and professional converters. It's got the same preamps as its more expensive big brothers like the Zentor. It has a suite of high quality onboard effects and it has definitely lit up the Tekarati community as a big deal. So is this just yet another audio interface or is it something a bit special? Let's go and look at what people are excited about. Then at the end, I will summarize the reasons why you should consider this audio interface and also list a few reasons why it just might not be for you. Here's what I'm going to cover. I've split it into sections and you can hop to each chapter if there's just one or two things you're interested in. So we're going to look at the controls on the interface, a bit about the clocking technology, the Synergy Core effects platform, the control panel and how it all fits together, using this for live streaming, using the Zengo on a mobile device, Yes, you can. A little bit about modeling mics and a bit about operating systems and platforms you can run it on. My first impression of this is pretty good. The Zengo feels sturdy. It's an all metal design and it's pretty understated. It looks cool on your desk and it's been designed from the ground up as a high quality portable studio that could fit in your backpack with your laptop and you'd be good to use it anywhere. On the rear, you've got these two combi inputs. You're getting the same high quality preamps and analog circuitry that Antelope Audio use in their much more expensive interfaces and studio gear. You can use these inputs for microphones, balanced or unbalanced line level or high Z, high Z instrument level. You've also got a pair of balanced TRS monitor outputs and these are mirrored to two RCA outputs. Plus there's also SPDIF digital IO to allow for expansion to more inputs. You've got a USB-C connection. This interface is completely bus powered by your laptop or desktop computer. If you don't have USB-C, you can use the adapter to plug it into a standard USB-A port. You'll also note there is an additional power USB port. This is so you can power the unit externally if you want to use it on the go with a battery powered laptop, or you can even use this interface directly with a mobile mobile device such as an Android phone or an iPad and use this to reverse charge your device at the same time as powering the interface. On the front you have got two headphone outputs and you can control the volume of these separately and you can also send separate mixes to each one which is really useful if for example you are recording a singer who wants to hear something different to you while they're tracking and you are monitoring. Everything you need to operate this as a recording interface is here on the top. This large rotary knob is both a dial and a button. The gain button is where you have control over the two analog inputs on the rear. You can select the input type, turn phantom power on and off and adjust the individual gain of each preamp. The HP Mon button allows you to cycle through and individually adjust the volume of the monitors and headphone outputs. You can also tap to quickly mute and unmute the outputs which is really useful. You press and hold to access the system and control menus where you can adjust things like sample rate and clock source. This antelope button functions as a return key to get you back to the start. Then this is a high quality IPS screen for signal monitoring. On first impression, the Zengo looks great and feels solid. However, to really understand this thing, we need to look at what's inside. And we're going to start with this. 
Antelope Audio are renowned for their clocking technology. They specialise in elaborate master clocking systems and digital audio converters. These are very stable and are used creatively to influence the audio quality in a process that they call acoustically focused clocking or AFC. The Zengo incorporates this unique 64-bit AFC which gives that width, separation and detail in your recordings. Now you're a musician and you may not be particularly interested in clocks but this is actually a big deal. To achieve a really good recording Recording, you need a combination of high quality preamps and analog circuits, a rock solid platform and really good conversion algorithms and that is what you get here. With the Zengo you can record at resolutions up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz with up to 127 decibels of headroom. For reference I'm recording this voiceover through the interface using my Audio-Technica condenser microphone. Now this is called the Zengo Synergy Core interface and Synergy Core is Antelope's proprietary onboard processing platform for real-time effects modeling. The effects are processed on the interface itself, not on your computer. This makes them lightning fast and it frees up your computer to perform other tasks rather than overloading your CPU with FX processing. You get 37 different effects included with the Zengo, including 11 different guitar amps and 11 different cabs, compressors, vintage EQ, mic pre's and you get a really good reverb. These effects are not just a bit of a gimmick, they are super high quality and there is literally no perceivable gap between your playing and hearing the effects. If you read the blurb you'll see that the Synergy Core platform is powered by a combination of DSP and FPGA chips, meaning the processing power is really fast and agile, it can run multiple effects all at once without any noticeable latency and it can model a whole range of different kinds of processes but without getting technical what you as a musician or recording artist need to know is this is more than just an audio interface. You also get a powerful effects processor and it is expandable as well. You can buy more effects from the Synergy Core library and the platform is constantly evolving and expanding. At this point, I should point out that these effects work on the interface and so you should think of them as external hardware effects when you're recording. You can print a recording of your instrument or mic with the effects supplied in your door and at the same time, you can record your dry and process signal on a separate track very easily. It is important to understand that the Synergy Core effects are not plugins. Antelope Audio does have a thing called AFX to Door which allows them to be used as plugins but it is currently only available on Mac for Thunderbolt devices so as things stand you aren't going to be using that utility with your Zengo at present. Having said all that, should you care? Well from my perspective at the price point this interface is being sold at, the effects platform is pretty amazing and you can use these effects very easily and efficiently for live streaming which I will come back to shortly because I think the live streaming capability of this interface is one of its absolute superpowers. Although you can set up and operate the Zengo as a standard audio interface on the device itself and use it as is, to take complete advantage of its capabilities and to access the Synergy Core effects, you need to master the control panel application. This is the mediator between the interface itself and your preferred door or recording software. The control panel mirrors a lot of the controls on the interface so you can handle everything from within this control panel and this is where you can also manage signal routing, effects processing, basic mixing and metering. The resulting audio is then routed into your door or streaming software for recording, mixing or live stream and you have quite a bit of control over that. I'll just give you a very quick tour. The Zengo control panel app does take a little bit of time to figure out but the nice thing is just how configurable it is. There are three tabs, monitors and headphones, digital outs, door IO. Now starting with the monitors and headphones, this is where you create the mix you can hear in your monitors and headphone output one. You can adjust clock source and sample rate at the top if desired. This is where you control what's happening with your preamps. You can select input type, you can turn phantom power on if required, select phase if necessary. If you have an antelope audio modeling mic, you can select the emulation here. By default, you will see eight channel strips like this. You can expand it to 16 if you need to keep going. The first four strips allow for Synergy Core effects to be added. You simply click in the box and you can select what you want. 
At the moment, you've got computer play on three and four. This would be anything playing back through your recording software, YouTube or Spotify or whatever. However, you can change this very easily. So if you wanted to apply two different sets of effects to your guitar, for example, you could change the inputs of these tracks to preamp one and two and do exactly that, just like this. You could then select computer play for five and six. These are strips where you can't add effects, so that might make more sense. You could then use 7 and 8 for the preamps, but without any effects applied, so you can hear the dry signal. You can adjust panning and individual levels of each input. You can solo and mute different tracks. If you want to link a pair of channels, you can. So, for example, computer play, that would make sense to link them. Now, your monitors and headphone one are going to get the same mix, but you can individually change volumes here. Headphone two allows you to set up a different mix. So maybe you might have a scenario where you want the singer to hear reverb applied to their mic signal on headphone one and maybe turn the backing track down a bit. But on headphone two, you could turn the reverb off so you could hear their dry signal and you could turn the volume of the backing up slightly if you wanted to. The digital outs tab is obviously if you have anything connected to SPDIF. And then if we turn to the door IO virtual inputs, this is where you can see the virtual ins and outs going to your door or other recording software. If we look in a door like Reaper, each track can be set up to record whatever you have showing here. So for example, you could have guitars with the effects set up one on this track, effects set up two on this track, and then the dry signal on this track. These virtual inputs don't necessarily have to be the same as your monitor and headphone inputs, although mostly this will make sense if they do but I'll come back to a scenario where you might want to change this when we look at live streaming. All in all though, as you can see, this is very configurable and pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. Let's move on to the idea of using the Zengo for live streaming and this is where things get a bit exciting because this interface has a loopback feature which makes it really easy to set up your inputs, apply all the effects and reverb you want and you can also incorporate backing tracks or any other audio playing back on your computer at the same time and stream the entire thing as a stereo mix. Let me show you just how easy this is. If you're using the Zengo with Windows, then this is incredibly easy. Once you have got the mix that you like in the control panel and you can hear what you want to hear through the headphones and mo or monitors, then what you would do is you would go to the door IO and you choose a pair of channels where you are going to select the loop back from that mix that you can hear in your headphones. You can have a loop back from monitors headphones one, or you can have a loop back from headphones two. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick the headphones one loop back, select it here, and then when I am in OBS, all I need to do is add an audio capture. And the nice thing about Windows is that you can see all the different virtual inputs from that control panel, and you just simply pick five and six which is where I assign that loop back and then you will be able to stream that audio as you can hear it in your headphones. Now the process is very similar on a Mac but it is slightly less intuitive because what happens with OBS on Mac is when you add an audio input capture you don't get to choose all the different virtual inputs it defaults to one and two so what you need to do in your control panel on Mac is you assign the same loopback thing but you do it on channels one and two on the door I.O. That's not intuitive, but that's what you do. So virtual inputs one and two have that loop back on them. And then in OBS, all you need to do is add the Zen Go as your audio input capture device. And what you will be streaming out is what you hear in your headphones, just the same. So you see as a streaming platform, the Zengo is extremely powerful and it's pretty simple. It solves the issue that many people have using interfaces with live streaming. It doesn't have that left right issue and it does it without having to buy any additional software. And because you have the effects running on the interface, you can do this anywhere you can set up your laptop and interface. So it's pretty cool.
As an extra bonus, this interface has also been designed for use with mobile devices. It's pretty easy to connect up. I've tested it with my Android phone, with a USB-C lead, and also had it working with my older Lightning iPad Pro. It works as a class compliant device with Android and Linux based systems without drivers. On an iPad, it works seamlessly with iOS. Once you have your mobile device connected, then you can use it for playback and recording in various apps. This is a particularly useful feature if you want to stream directly from your phone using the built-in camera or you could use it for video creation with high quality audio. For completeness, I'm just going to very briefly mention Antelope Audio's modeling mics here, because this is another feature you can access directly from the Zengo if you happen to own one. Antelope Audio's modeling mics are high quality microphones in their own right and can be used natively, but you can also access a whole locker full of mic emulations. An additional feature of this interface is you can run the modeling mics on board. Now to clarify, you can obviously use any microphone you want with the Zengo. You don't need a modeling mic, but it is nice to know that you can use one onboard the interface if you wish. Now, just a quick note about platforms and operating systems. I've used this interface very successfully on my Windows laptop, which is a relatively modest i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. It worked particularly well in OBS on Windows. I also have a new M1 Mac Mini. Mac Silicon is now fully supported, which is good news. It works equally well on Intel Macs. Overall, I have really enjoyed getting to know this interface. It offers high quality recording and playback, no doubt about it. The effects are pretty amazing. One of the big plus points is the Zengo is absolutely fantastic for streaming. Because it's bus powered, you don't need an extra power supply to access those effects and run the DSP. The mobile device capabilities are a real bonus. The Zengo really is designed to be a complete high quality portable studio, making it a good choice for DJs and live performance. For me, it's a keeper. I don't think there's another interface quite like it at this point. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a win for Antelope Audio. It's an exciting new player in the sub $500 interface arena. However, nothing is perfect. I have seen a few moans and negative comments. Many of these revolve around the fact that Antelope have aimed this interface at a particular price point. And so some of those would have been nice to have features have been left off to keep that quality high. So there is no ADAT, there's no onboard MIDI, there's only one set of balance monitor out puts the second set of RCA and they mirror the mix. The fact you can't access the Synergy Core effects as plugins from within your door upsets people. And while this unit has been designed with more inexperienced users in mind, you do need to spend some time reading the manual and figuring out the detail. If reading manuals is not your thing, then you may think that this is a negative point. I've enjoyed getting to know it. The best relationships take a bit of time. Now I've covered a lot of ground here, but I'm sure there are things I have missed. If so, just post any comments or questions below and I will try and answer them or direct you to the right place. Other than my voiceover, I haven't actually demoed the effects here. There's so much to talk about. I'm running out of time and in fairness, there are much better guitarists and vocalists than me who have put the Zengo through its paces. So what I have done is made a playlist, which I will link to below and there too, so you can see further reviews and listen to some excellent demonstrations of the effects. Vintage King have a video with some great electric guitar examples. John Brown also does a fabulous demo with electric guitar and the Edge Duo modeling mic. Nathan Larson demonstrates the Zengo with acoustic guitar and vocals, as does Music Tech Help Guy. And finally, if you are into numbers, then Jacob Dark uses the RTL utility to check out the latency and posts figures for you to examine. I've also added some of Antelope Audio's own tutorial and demonstration videos on there, so you can learn a bit more about Zengo and Synergy in general. Plus there's a nice one for the geeks from PS Audio if you want to know a bit more about exactly what is FPGA. He gets pretty excited about it. Well I hope you found this helpful. If you like the video give it a thumbs up that really does help me out. Do subscribe if you want to get more of my home recording studio tutorials and reviews. My next video is also going to be a review of something completely different but equally exciting so I hope you will check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.